Hey, Spitwads, you know we are on a mission to make Mondays great. That's why we release every week on a Monday to make the world a brighter, better place. But you want to know what's better than a Monday? What's that, Jason? Fridays, bro. Yeah, Fridays, Fridays is great. great. And if you want early access to the shows and you want to support this great show, you can go to jointhespit.com, get early access, ad-free shows, and we, we will love you more <laughs> at jointhespit.com. <laughs> What happens when three buffoons give life advice, explore unrealistic situations, and give random topics more thought than they probably deserve? It's the Spitballers Podcast with Andy, Mike, and Jason. Bow to the bow, to ding, ding, the big, the bing, bing. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Bow with the bow. You, you almost, yeah. I did it. You made it through. That's yeah, not I mean, that was not too shabby. It's fine. <laughs> you rocked out like a kid, you know. <sighs> Welcome into the Spitballers podcast. So excited to have you with us. A brand new episode. Thank you for bearing with us in recent weeks. We yes. we had to skip a week. Had some but family we're, fun. We're back, baby. <laughs> Let's call it that. Uh, we got a review on today's show. Would you rather? That's a great question. And we are uh, we're we're gonna do a film festival today Ooh. for our draft. So we'll keep you in suspense, but it's gonna be fun. And by suspense, I mean it's probably in the show title. Also, it's going to make you want to spend mm -hmm. the yes, yes. the rest of the week until the next Spitballers episode come comes out just watching greatness just unless you're like 20 years old or younger no even for the <laughs> even for the youngins no, no not even for the youngins absolutely absolutely not this is this is the oldest man thing you've ever done Jason. this is really no way you don't even realize what you are doing no way my 12 year old yeah. i know what's on my list and my 12 year olds would love every single thing. No, they wouldn't. I know for a fact they it, love half of them. I know I'm for a fact that you're their dad, and they might like some of it. But when we were in the in the office compiling our lists of of things that we want to draft, Jason, you you let out the the quintessential. They they just don't make them like they used to. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, that was a and, joke, and you aged. Ten years on the spot. Look, like, did you go up watching? Did you go up <laughs> the best. Watching a lot of seventies and eighties movies. Oh no, those were way yeah. too old. Okay, <laughs> only old people like that. <laughs> well, we appreciate everybody out there listening, <laughs> subscribing, and reviewing the show. Let's read one right now. Review Asaurus Rex. This one comes in from Zach Davenport from the United States. The Spitballers changes lives. Mm. Five stars. The Spitballers podcast is many things to many people. For some, it's an easy drive into work. For some, it's a road trip time consumer. For others, it's gym time background comedy. But for me, it speaks truth into my life. It showed me how evil and wrong I was for enjoying carpeted bathroom floors and back to front wiping. Who likes carpeted bathroom floors? Uh, this is thanks to the Spitballers podcast. I now know how lost I was. Thank you, Spitballers, for changing my life. I will forever be in your debt. You're welcome, Zach. Yeah, we appreciate you. the The conversation that we had, and this was early on in the show, but the the revelation that many many people out there discovered of the the standing wipers, and that they're like they're out there. Yeah. It, like some of my closest friends that I went to school with, they it, it became a topic of conversation, and, and it was like I've always done that. I've never thought of doing it another way, and it was so. Yes, we are we're out there changing yeah. lives. Yeah, Wipe, you know. Wiping is one of those things where, like, I mean, you don't watch other people do it. No, if you were not taught at a young age, then you will never be but taught. Who, <laughs> like, but who teaches? Do you teach the stand? Like when you were doing the potty training, did you say, "Okay, now here's the part of uh, here's a variant. Uh, here's the party of uh, <laughs> part of the poopsie where you stand up." Well, I mean, think and about then it. You have a white bad you, habits happen, man. You just you develop a habit. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, a lot of times though, if you, if once your kid is becoming potty trained, yeah. don't you have them like stand up and turn over, and make it easy to wipe? 
Well, yeah, that's when you're wiping them. Yeah. Right, but that's what they're learning. Which is still my preferred way of... <laughs> yes, that is that is my preference as well. I mean, if there was... Jeff! If we're, if we're picking... I've done a duty! <laughs> oh. oh, man. Um, in sickness and in health. That's um, right. So, yeah, I mean, we, we, we've opened up a lot unrelated, of Unrelated, Jason's wife has left him. <laughs> yeah, unre- unrelated. He needs somebody to wipe him. Um, I'm presenting! Okay. <laughs> oh, we're moving on. Would you rather... I like how much you thought your own joke was funny <laughs> yeah, right there. Yeah, I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Noah from Patreon, would you rather listen to all the music from now on at half speed or two times the speed? Mm. The timeliness of this question is hilarious to me because I was just in a car last night with some friends and we were talking about how one of the people in the car is like so well, I, I want to say well read, but it's not. It's well listened. I mean, has heard every that, podcast, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The person that's heard every, they know what's going on in the podcast world. And so I made the joke. I'm like, oh, do you listen on like four times speed or two times speed? It's like, no, no, I don't, I don't do that. And then we started to wonder, who listens at half speed? That's a feature on all the platforms. But who mm. and how and where yeah, are you the, listening at one half speed? What's I, the benefit other than it's like it's very funny to hear our conversation at half speed. The scats at half we, speed. We, we've, we've been told it sounds like... Uh, some fellas who are out very late. <laughs> yes. Right. I but think who that is the people? Yeah, who's the, who, what's that for? The half speed is novel for a good 10 second laugh. You know what I mean? You, you but listen. That's what I mean. Like, what, they, there's no real reason? No, there's no. I mean, if you, if you were like, wait, what did they say? Hold on. Enhance. You know, and then you could slow it down and crank the volume. But there is really no practical. Uh, reason for that and if you're listening to music this way correct me if i'm wrong mike you're the you're the uh music mastro here um, yes that's what they call me either way Master whether you speed and it Maestro up or combined. you slow it down i feel like it's ruined you're the yes the, generally speaking the the there's ways to do it now with with audio processing but your the pitch and everything is going to change like the key of the song will be different if you go half speed or at double time and so, I, I've, I've, you know, back when we had cassette players and things, you could, you, you could uh, manipulate the audio, so to speak. Yeah, get Alvin, Alvin, and, and you get, yeah, you get the Alvin and the Chipmunks. And I actually found like there were some songs that if you speed it up, you're like, this is kind of, this is interesting. Like this is cool, you know, like making it even more upbeat. But going down to half speed sounds just terrible. Yeah, I don't listen to blues and jazz which i feel like were the only things like if you really slow it half to half speed it would be like okay okay i'm chilling here Can you imagine only time on half speed that in I, who can say oh what? oh enya yeah enya it would, half it, speed would you die before that ends can. it would sound like a bunch of monks yeah <laughs> um yeah i think i think if, if you speed it up you're gonna have some songs that maybe become even better bangers you know what i mean yeah. like oh that drum beat yeah if only this were a little Double faster time. and at least like you were saying andy at least you can consume more right I mean, if, you, if you go to that or get it over quicker like yeah. there's there's people out there with hour long records you're like this mm. is now an hour and a half mm. uh, no no one got time for this not my tempo <laughs> so we're all speed going up we're all drums. going we're going to speed up right uh-huh. oh yeah for sure Addison from the website would you rather have a garage door remote that only opens your garage or only closes your garage the opposite must be done from the button inside the garage. Mm. Um, well, that's easy. I mean, that that's just not really a tough one. No, that's Wait. super easy. Yeah, yeah I mean, you, you, it, need you it would to want it to it. open it. Yeah, because when you're coming out yeah. at the beginning, you you would just click the button. You're right there. So am it, I? Am I? Yeah, there's something I'm confused about. Because then you here? could just get in your car and open the garage. Right. Or, right. Wait, yeah. no, no, no. If it opens, okay. Hold if on. It Which opens you... every time. Let's say, let's just it go always with that. opens. Yeah. It always opens. My, but I've got to close it by hand. Then when I'm leaving, so then you got to do work, the laser. Would you job. rather be inconvenienced when you're leaving the house yeah, or when okay. you arrive at the house? Yeah, we were reading it like there was a clear path that there was no inconvenience. <laughs> yes, that is how I saw it. <laughs> and I think all three, three of us, three, three of us, got suckered into yeah, being we like. Did. 
I, if, if I only open it, it's fine. Al, did you not think through this? It's I so, looked at him like he was an idiot. It's so <laughs> obvious. But then I started walking through it, and I'm like, wait. He's no. never an idiot. Then I would still have to go back inside. And did you, uh, sidebar here, did you guys, I mean, we're old. We know this. Uh-huh. Did you ever grow up with like friends that didn't have the remote? Door opener? I mean, I had friends that did not have a remote opener. We had to open it every time I and would, close it every time. I would never have had them as friends. No, I, 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 had, I did not have... I don't recall that. That's how I'm, my house was. We had, yeah, the, I mean, we had a key for it, the little yep. knob, and then you'd turn, like, so when turn you it left, and lift it by hand. You'd get out of the car and run and close it for your mom? Yep. Yeah. Was it wood? No. Okay. <laughs> what material uh, was, was it? <laughs> was, I'd like to dive deeper. It was in, aluminum. And was color? prohibition still Aluminium. going on? What if... What garage is this they i mean this is this is what baby did you have cable we did oh wow well, we splurged right. there all right yeah now Pri- i know why you had no Pri- garage door priorities so I, we I, had a garage door opener i mean i remember garages that didn't have the laser sensor right so it was, oh, it was, cr- it was death like, traps when, when that garage is coming down it's it's coming down respect Th- the garage that's why i asked <laughs> whether it was wood because they used to make them in wood and then without a sensor in wood that's a, you're done i, I mean that's I will bring up a farewell. So a situation that I have been living with, mm. uh, simply due to, it's one of those things that you totally forget this is a problem until the, just the moments when you're dealing with the problem, and then you forget, and so you never actually ever fix it. <laughs> okay. So my garage button, the uh, at some point the 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 actual f- the the physical button on the uh, that covers the trigger essentially yeah, yeah, yeah. was broken. So now that's that's gone and it's just the the metal. I don't know the technical term, but so you have to it's push it pushing the switch without an actual button on the outside. But what's we never known about garage door openers and I don't know if this is universal. Somehow the external button it like helps with the depth of how far the switch goes in because things get crazy with my garage opener. If you push it in too far. Oh, is it a double click? It goes up, and then as soon as you hit the laser, the garage door Uh-oh. starts to come down. That's called closing on your car. And it comes down upon your car. So you have to push it the perfect depth, or when you're backing out, the garage is going to come down on you. And then when, when that happens, then your remote no longer <laughs> opens the garage you know, door from now, the how, outside. How long have you oh. had this problem? Uh, like a week? We're You're just talk- waiting to sell the house. This is this is pre-pandemic, my man. Oh <laughs> goodness, those so years. Yes, I know a guy whose whose garage door came right down on him. Yeah, he's sitting between you two. <laughs> Wait, your garage door smashed? Did you? you not know the top of his car is a, a, a cracked? Yeah, glass? the top of my car is, is no. Crushed. It I, has been for I six mean, months. We both of our cars, uh, me and the wife, the the garage has hit our cars multiple times. Okay, so you talked to Andy about so what, the, what kind of garage door? Dude, my garage doors are legit. Okay, <laughs> uh, not to brag here. Not wood. We're nope. talking steel. Yeah, look, we've got the wood paneling over the front, and it's so doggone heavy. When I first moved into this house, we, we, the sensor didn't work. It it's is it, it did you, is your button broken? <laughs> no, the button. You fine. see, if you break off the button, but in one of the garages, um, it, one it, of the garages it came down. It. it came down and crushed a blower. You know, like the leaf blower. Oh, oh it, it just crushed crushed, it crushed, crushed it. that thing. I mean, hold that on, thing was toast. On. But so it, did wait is there a laser on this that's or is this going to kill one of the kids so, so that got fixed afterwards okay. so, the so laser- it came down mm-hmm. and it it hit the object on the ground yeah and did not retract. oh it stayed closed <laughs> it, i it, was like what is that thing so over you, by it, my garage and it was half of a leaf blower it forced its way down the other half was on the inside and then it was flattened to the ground like a cartoon where the garage comes down so uh, he has a guillotine brand garage <laughs> <laughs> that's right the guillotine garages are all the rage but yes, yeah, so I was I was backing out of my garage, uh-huh. and because we have like a little RV garage, and so that's where I saw that the door had been left open. So I reached mm. down to my garage door opener to close <laughs> that one, <laughs> and so I accidentally hit the. I'm backing out of my garage when I see the other one. Okay, so, so I, you're on, you're halfway out, halfway out, and I click the button to close <laughs> the other garage door. Okay. But I also clicked the button to close the garage door I was coming out of. Okay. So it came down right on top of me. And I just assumed, like, I'm backing Sunroof out. Sunroof destroyed. Yeah, I'm I'm backing out, and I assume I have destroyed my garage door. 
Like the garage door is Of course. Wrecked. Car versus garage door? Okay, hold on. Hold on. Pause. Pause. Garage door comes down. Mm-hmm. Did it like continue to try and go down or did, it, no, did, it, did that it, actually it, go back it up? It went back up. It hit after and it was a like, little oh, bit. Oh, shoot. You know, big smash. I was like, oh, no, I ruined my garage door. I, I pull out. <laughs> I can't even see. I literally can't tell where I hit the garage door. The garage door is invincible. My car is wrecked. <laughs> like, it's gotten in an accident because from the top. <laughs> you do not mess with the guillotine garage doors, man. They are, they are this hefty. Is, this is a wonderful long detour to tell you why the manual garage doors were really good. I mean, all these buttons and... Uh, and yeah, you didn't accidentally close <laughs> close your door on your car. My my thought here to sum, to sum up the question and answer it is that I would rather have it open when I get home. I'm generally... You're coming back from a drive. You're tired. That's when I want it to open up, not when I'm leaving. When I'm leaving, I got energy okay, to be so inconvenienced. You, but... but you're in a hurry. Yeah, you could be in a hurry, and you not have, me. You got to do the, the the laser jump. Yeah, I mean the laser and, jump is getting harder the older I get. That's what I'm. And sometimes you'll once out of every you know fifty or whatever, you're gonna trip it, and that garage is gonna go back up. You're gonna go. Ugh, yeah, I gotta go back in and close the garage you ever, again. You ever try to do the laser jump and you get about halfway into the run and you're like, I'm not gonna make it. Dude, and then you, you just guys, stop and it goes guys, all the way down. Listen, <laughs> you know, ever, I, I have never, never done, done a laser that. jump, buddy. I am the pro at the laser. Oh. You got here's what you got to do. You got to have the confidence of Indiana Jones. Okay, you just walk. You don't have to run. You don't have to beat okay. this garage door. You just walk. Yours, a, you do. Well, They're, look, those are high risk. <laughs> I play with fire, my man. Um, Guillotine. And then, and then all you got to do is like a little. You just do like a walk with a little scissor kick. So you just go and you flip your leg over and then you flip your yeah, other one over. Yeah, this is this things that short people say. Ooh. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, <laughs> I didn't realize we were fighting today. That does make sense though. We have a we have a clearance issue up top. Yeah. I oh, gotta yeah. get low. I've got another three feet it could come down. <laughs> we're limboing, man. Oh, I wouldn't I wouldn't lean backwards. Go forward. <laughs> <laughs> is that my problem? I always do the limbo on my way out. All right. Um, Maggie. Maggie from the website has a question for us. Would you rather have someone cut cut you in line <laughs> for a roller coaster or at the DMV? Oh. I mean, th now, the last question, we thought it was very clear. It was not. This one's very clear. Very clear. It has. It's the roller coaster. Hundred percent has to be because if when someone cuts in front of you in the roller coaster, as furious as you get, that person, it, perhaps they end up being the last person onto that particular train. Mm -hmm. But at the most, that's adding three minutes to your wait. And worst case scenario is. You're still in line for a roller coaster. That's oh, oh I didn't I, factor that in. I'm ha I'm I'm having a good day. Uh huh. I'm I'm at a roller coaster park. This is great. <laughs> Do you know how angry I am at a DMV? That's, that's, that's what they call them. Roller roller coaster, coaster parks. parks. You ever been to a roller coaster <laughs> park? They're the best. Um, but at the DMV, when you walk through the doors, oh my gosh, anger overcomes you. Yes, just it doesn't matter. You could be having a great day. You walk through the doors. There's a and force you're field. Well, just there are angry. several dementors in there. <laughs> oh, for sure, sucking the joy out of everybody. And one person in a DMV line, that's thirty minutes. Yes, I have always thought, like you know, part of it, it's just you're doing the DMV yeah. thing. But why in the world can government buildings can they not paint them? Like, why do we have to have, like, no, like, post offices, uh, the DMV, they're not welcoming places because they are just, it's white, it's the cheap linoleum floors with white walls, there's no personality. I mean, put, do, put something on the walls, No man. natural light anywhere. Get a mural up there. There really is not natural lighting in government no. buildings. No, it's just. Because it's part of the control. And we can you do better. And you know that they've. <laughs> They've skimped on the lighting, so it's like some flickering lights. Um, it's just a really sad place. Can it I is. Bring up, uh, man. Something's just been driving me crazy. Oh man, man. talk oh, here to we us. Go. Talk to us. Here we go. Lights that make sound. Mm. Oh my gosh, the <laughs> buzzing, <laughs> humming <laughs> light. You turn the light on, yeah. and it's like I I should not be able to hear light. Light is a visual. <laughs> 
<laughs> light is a visual thing. You, sir, have jumped into the wrong <laughs> sense. There is, there's, yes. They, I there, have five of them and you employ one. There is a restaurant here. Uh, shout out to L&L, uh, Hawaiian Barbecue. <laughs> Not a sponsor. Um, but when we, when, want to when you go in oh, that yes, store. yes, yes. <laughs> this is running on for four years. Oh. The buzzing of the lights in that building drive me crazy. Clearly. Yes. No, they, they've, they've been buzzing since we got in this office. Which They're means buzzing people to this live day. in that busy, I, buzzing place. I have a confession. Oh, no. Oh. There's a buzzing light in my kitchen. Oh, no. You haven't fixed it. And I haven't fixed it. Because you learned to live with it. I hate it. <laughs> Every time I turn the lights on, I hate it. Al, do not help him. Now is this because it's It'll out never of get fixed if I don't. It's out of reach. That's exactly right. Like you would you need I wouldn't any. have to bring a ladder in. Is that cuz you're so short from the girl? <laughs> I walked right into it. I was setting it. I was, oh, no. I was already building that up in my head too. Dang it. I was what an idiot. I thought I was going to joke about being too lazy for a ladder instead I got shorted. Dang it. So you don't like buzzing lights, eh? Oh, oh they're the worst. I don't like being shorter than you two either. <laughs> I don't think anybody does like the buzzing lights. I don't think that's ever been a feature. I don't think somebody feature like buzzes when you turn it on. Not everyone can hear them though. I mean, the, the, the one you're talking about, I think everyone can. But there, like, there are lights that emit a frequency that not everybody can hear. Yeah, just uh, mutants. Yeah, <laughs> they're the only ones that can hear us with the superpowers. Uh, Al, do we have time for one more? We got nothing but time. <laughs> We got nothing but time. All right. Uh, this he's, is, he's paid by the hour. It's a two-part That's episode. Right. Have we ever done it to be continued before? Um, all right. Big Lonnie B from Patreon. All right. Would you rather never be able to sit on a toilet for the rest of your life? What? You can still squat. Well, ironic with the discussion earlier. Or never lie in a bed the rest of your life. Oh, come on. I mean, I... I mean, how, how, how do I not choose... You you lay down. Is it lay down or lie down? You lie down. You yeah. lay down. You, you both. You layeth down. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. You layeth to bed. Um, you do that every day, every single day. Yeah, but let, let me just bring a wrinkle in there because my first gut was like, you got to be able to lie down. Yeah. However, lay down. <laughs> yeah. Layeth. layeth. Um, <laughs> however. We think of not being able to sit on a toilet in all of the good, the the good normal regular movements, but you're in a pickle, right? You're having a bad day, right? You've got a a long. You're going to spend some time in this room today. You got to squat for all that. You got to squat for a whole session. Yeah, for a whole bad bowl session. Man, I didn't think about. Think about the, how strong your quads would be. The power of the legs and and what's necessary there for a bad. There for is, a bad time. There is a benefit. I mean, your legs will get stronger. You will, yeah, you will, or they'll they'll cramp up, and then you're falling in. <laughs> I mean, those are the two outcomes. Yeah, every once in a while, you will have to take a standing break. Yeah. So, yeah. which is just a you don't want a full st stand. You just go from a crouch. You're to gonna a full have. Stand, you'll have no choice. Which is a masculine. And it'll just be either you're wiping all the time, or it's just mush. Now, I imagine mush. that I have already built blocks up on each side of my toilet, so I'm standing elevated. Straddling the toilet so the I shortness? can squat. No, <laughs> you can't squat and be above a toilet seat. You guys aren't that tall, yes, are you? you? So hold, hold on. What? What, what are we, we defining squat work as me, here? Work me through this. Okay, okay. Why do you need so blocks? You're putting For blocks on. How tall are you? Okay, so listen. <laughs> you're putting like individualized blocks on like the left and the right of the seat to go well, up. Yes, because okay. what I'm seeing is not just kind of crouching down to like a, a a a slightly higher than chair position i'm okay. picturing what i want to do in my world is i want full squat i want um like you know the squatty potty you get your knees up high uh -huh. and you're, you're in not that sitting though i mean i you, know you've got to be rested on your legs well, i'm i'm i want to squat to where i am like f full knee bent you don't knees get the are all the way like, bent there's there are there look we, we are very westernized here it, we're living with our big fancy toilets, but there's a lot of cultures that like it's it's a hole and you squat. Yeah, that's what they do, and like they're very, they're very in that it's, culture it's doable. They're, they're because they grew up doing it, right? And we're these, but big, you don't fat, get to build Americans. out your squat toilet. You have to. This is yes, anything this is existing toilets. You figure out how to poop in a squat right now. You don't get to build nothing. 
then I can't do it. Yeah, well, you're going to have to find a way. You, could you stand? I don't think I could stand and poop. Guys, I have another question with this. If you are not sitting, okay? Uh-huh. Because normally, what, look, everyone's, everyone, knows, everyone poops. Yeah. You pull your pants down. Mm -hmm. You keep your shirt on because you're sitting. Right. But if you're in a standing position with your shirt and you got a shirt that's longer, Ooh. Well, I mean, are you, you going to up. have to fully disrobe, uh, like full nude? Because you, you get a little uh, wee wee I, on the shirt. Yeah, or or the backside. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to get. I mean, if you're standing, I don't need the shirt down. I'm just saying, like. You may have to do You might more. have to pull the shirt. Or a oh, roll. You got to roll. Yeah. No, you just do the thing where you pull the front of your shirt up over and put it behind your head. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's, that's what the I'm best. rocking. I'd rather be naked than do that. Oh, no way. You know how cool you look when you got the front of your shirt behind your neck? That's aw that's an awesome look. It's, it's really and you're like this. It's restrictive of. in the armpits. Ah, it is. It gets a little tight in the yeah. armpits, but that's going to help you with your posture in the squat. <laughs> oh, so, man. Um, your squats, <laughs> your squats, yeah. um, I'm gonna, I'm still gonna squat, when but you I sit it down. Uh, well, now on the flip side, does this mean I can just go to bed on a couch? No, you really? can go to bed in a chair on the ground. No, because you're still. Uh, Was well, it okay? I assume by bed they're they're trying to mean like you don't have a comfortable place to that's yeah. not what it says it, it says would you rather never be able to sit on a toilet not like i can't still sit on a chair or never lie or layeth you're gonna in poop a bed. in a chair if i if i have to sleep on a couch for the rest of my life sign me up yeah. i i love sleeping on the couch i it's, do too i love sleeping i on the couch. get fantastic sleep on my couch now do Sometimes you have like I a recliner like I, or are you no, laying across it, the, it's, it's a section oh yeah uh, it's, it's the best sign me up man somehow really no it's couches good. In this situation. Yeah, see, that's what I've, I figured. Lazy boy's fine. Okay, well, then they're great. A lazy boy's... You could sleep in a lazy boy? Oh, heck yeah, I could sleep really? in a lazy boy. Really? I can, get, that it. I can get that done. Yeah. I mean, I uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what? Why couldn't you sleep in a lazy boy, but you could sleep on a couch? Because you're actually flat. Yeah, I mean, oh, dude, a, I incline my difference. bed every night. I'm with Mike. I couldn't sleep in a I lazy can't, boy. I can't sleep flat anymore. You can't sleep flat? Oh, no. Are you a back sleeper? Because uh, if start, you're a stomach sleeper, your spine's uh, yes. in trouble. <laughs> I start on my back. But yeah, I love an inclined sleep. See, walking in on someone on a lazy boy stomach sleeping? <laughs> no, see, that's All the, the thing. visual. <laughs> Is he breathing? I I was going to say, like, when I when I would sleep in a this chair. This man's been murdered. I would turn sideways. I would sideways sleep on a lazy boy. This is not good for your back. Oh, man. Yeah, no, you've got to be a back sleeper if you're going to do that. The The visual of... Walking in on someone in a lazy boy face sleeping face down because yeah. they're not sleeping. <laughs> they're they're just inverted. listening to this movie. <laughs> <laughs> what? All right, let's move on. They can't watch it. Hey, Spitwads, I know what you're thinking right now. Right here, right now, you're wondering how I look this good all the time. I've wondered that since the day we met. And if you were wondering, Mike, uh, you have the answer. You, you Also, I smell great, Mike. You know this. Yeah. Uh, the answer is, of course, Hawthorne. They're grooming products. Oh, you're a Hawthorne man. I'm a Hawthorne man. They're my answer when I want to look good, feel good, smell good. That trifecta, the trifecta of great. That is myself. It's, it's because of Hawthorne. Uh, they are the premium men's grooming brand that makes it quick and easy to confidently look your best with skincare and hair care made just for you. They use data from hundreds of thousands of customers to recommend perfect products for your body chemistry, skin type, hair type. So you take this quiz, right? And then they match you with perfect stuff and then you use it and then you're perfect as well. So make sure you're ready for anything or anyone that comes your way by taking Hawthorne's quiz today. Go to hawthorne.co and use the promo code SPITBALLERS to get 10% off your first purchase. That's H-A-W-T-H-O-R-N-E dot C-O. Promo code SPITBALLERS, Hawthorne.co, promo code SPITBALLERS. That's a great question. <laughs> you can't, all right. You can't watch it. If you're face down? No. Yeah. Uh, all right, that's a great the question. the lazy boy around, <laughs> peering over the edge. <laughs> Sorry, go on. Let's have some great questions here. Evan from Patreon. At what length of time does a vacation turn into a place where you live? <laughs> hmm. 
I think you can have a month-long vacation. I've never had one. It sounds awesome. But I feel like people do that. You can definitely have a month long. Right. I think you could have a I think you could have a six weeker. Oh man. For sure. For sure. But do For you still sure. do you still call that a vacation or do you call that an extended stay? Uh I mean people go on more than six week trips in their motorhomes. Is that a vacation if your house comes with you? Yeah. That's an excellent Well, it's not your house for those people. That is an excellent question. Some people it is. Yeah. Then it's not a vacation. Okay. That's obvious, yeah. <laughs> now that he says it like that, <laughs> it's pretty obvious. If that's where you live, you're never on vacation. But oh. do you live in the motorhome or do you live in that environment? That city that whatever? You live in the you live in the motorhome. Yeah, you live in the motorhome. Yeah, man. for sure. Because that's where you are. That's where you sleep. Yeah. Yeah, where do you live? The the Nebraska? Well, I no, mean, it's to be fair, home. you wouldn't get mail at the motorhome. <laughs> you'd get mail in Nebraska. Um, you'd have to have a P.O. box. You'd have to. Do, can you deliver to a mobile home? That, can can uh, you get uh, an like, address for a moving? mobile home? As in, like, one that now is... I'm, picture them, I'm picturing them on the road driving and the mail truck <laughs> comes, and there's an exchange of mail that's while it's moving. <laughs> Delivery! It's like a <laughs> relay race transition. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Um. I would take that. So, final answer. So, like, uh, <laughs> if you if you said, "Hey, I'm going to go spend six weeks in Europe on a trip," I mean, that's a vacation. Okay, so we got to go. Three months than is. I think three months is where I'm going to draw the draw the line. Oh man, I would love a two month vacation. Where do you need a visa? That's a sabbat- how long do you need a visa? That's a sabbatical. A sabbatical is, is a sabbatical a vacation? A sabbatical. If you're is coming back, not <laughs> a vacation. No, a sabbatical is, is a break. Yeah, that you're gonna. Oh, that sounds like a else. vacation. Because <laughs> I feel like a vacation is a break. Not not usually, because when <sighs> I go on vacations, I come back more tired than when I left. I mean, a well, sabbatical. you got kids. Yes. A sabbatical is technically a period of paid leave. Granted. It's like a vacation, like a paid vacation. <laughs> sounds pretty similar. Now, can you, if you are unpaid, right? right. Like you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you're just out of work. Okay. Like Al. Can you, yeah. right. Can you take a vacation? I got plenty of work. Or are you always on vacation? No money. Ooh, are you always on? You're always on vacation from work. Hmm. Now, is I'm, a vac? Yeah. So is a vac? That's if I go I, someplace for three months. Are you? Do you guys think I'm on vacation, or did you think I moved there? I mean, if I know you're coming back, I guess I still would say you're on vacation. But at okay, the th- so but at the three month mark, do you start going? Is Andy? Is he coming back? Yeah. I mean, six months. So if it's long enough that people start asking the question, are they actually coming back? Maybe. Then then you've moved into you live there now. I think a vacation is entirely dependent upon the purpose. That's it. It can be any length of time. Yeah, do I get mail in this new place? Is that the line? Oh, that's a great line to draw in the sand. You can't get mail on vacation. If no. you do, you that means you need people to know. You've changed address at that yeah. point. Yeah. Uh, I, I, but I guess I'm thinking like, you know, you, if you go somewhere for a year, right? A year. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's too long to be a vacation unless the entire year is a leisurely trip. If I'm going for leisure and for entertainment, that is still a vacation at any length of time. But if you go overseas for like school, that's not a vacation. No, it isn't. I think it's uh, well. Ba- let, can I can I make this more complicated? Oh, please. please do. Josh from the website also asked, "What's the difference between a vacation, a trip, and a journey?" Okay, okay, let's get deep. Ooh, it's a so, combo. Look, vacation to me is a it's a round trip situation. You're coming, you're coming back from where you left. I feel like a trip is also included in a round trip because it's in the name. It sure, a trip- but a journey feels like you're going from, from one part of the map to the other part of the map, and that's the end of it. Yes, journeys are one they're not, way. They're one way, you're, right? You're going to be different like, at the end of a journey. I'm in. I'm, yes. That's yes. the whole point of a journey. You know, you're, you're going to Mordor. You, your character has been transformed. Yeah. You don't know if you're coming back. You, don't, you might come back, but when you come back, you're not going to be the same. That's right. Because you've been on. Okay, that one's easy. A journey. Yeah. A, uh, is a trip a vacation with multiple stops? No, a trip is a vacation where there is no fun. 
A trip is yes. something where you had to go on. It's obligation. Yes. Mm. It's I went home for the family reunion. That's not a vacation. The little Einsteins disagree There's a wedding. You, There's a Jason. wedding someplace. There's a wedding. I got a trip. Yeah. I got to take a trip. Because the little Einsteins go on a trip in their favorite rocket ship. Heading to the stars. Yeah. Um, that's a good point. <laughs> that's a good point. I didn't think about the little Einsteins. that's Einstein. not a vacation. That's with a purpose. Yeah, I mean... <sighs> I mean, I do feel like taking a rocket ship makes it a vacation because that'd be super so is cool. It, yeah, if, if it's a trip, you have the the reason is not just hanging out. Yeah, there's a little bit more business. It's you, a business trip. You can write it off right? for your taxes. If, if it's a business baby. trip. Yeah, yeah, a trip is not fun. A vacation maybe. is fun. Yeah. So it, let me ask you this final question. Well, what if so, some of the, I mean, you've been on vacation where it's not fun. No, nah, it's a trip. Oh, when you come back, you're like, <laughs> yeah. hey, did you just get How back was from your vacation? vacation? Uh, I, didn't, I didn't get it was one. A bad I, was trip. On, I was on a trip. Yeah. Now, I feel like you could go on a road trip with your family. Right. And that would turn into a journey. Yeah. Because you are not coming back the same person. That's true. But what if you have fun? Then when you get back, was it a vacation? And what if you went to see Journey perform? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that is. I should have been gone. <laughs> the, that's the circle of life, I believe, is what that's called. This show's so stupid. It is dumb. It's a dumb show. <laughs> Mr. Odshu from the website, what is the ideal time for dinner? Oh, this is a very, very good question. Yeah, and there's only one right answer. Oh, please. Because okay. it says hold ideal. On, hold, hold on. Hold on. It says ideal. What is the ideal time? We're, we're counting to three, and we're saying what time? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, you, hold on. Do you hold. have your time? I, I have what I think the world thinks, and I have what no, I think. No, you, you know, this is your answer. This okay, is Andy got, Holloway. Yes, I have mine. This is a one, two, three, shoot answer, okay? Okay, okay. just the number, right? Yes. One, two, three, five. six p.m. Yes, Did you, I went six. Six, six p.m. I went, went five. Well, that's, that's because you're, you're that's so early, 70 but years old. People are still at work. I don't even get off work till five. Nine let, to five. Let, let, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this real quick, real quick. <laughs> Hold on. 530 was the real answer. Let me ask you this, Andy. Have you ever <laughs> gone at your ideal time to a restaurant and had any problem getting a seat? No. No, because nobody's eating dinner at five o'clock. You want to know why I eat at five? Because you're old. Because I don't want a problem getting a seat. And I got in that habit a long time ago. I was like, man, I go at 5. By the time I actually get my food, it's 5.36. I'm I just, a genius. I just love that, Alice. <laughs> I got to leave work early today. <laughs> I want to have dinner. No, we're going to need you to stay till 6. I need to see my Five's family. a little. Now that I say it out loud, 5 is not about right. It's 5.36. I wanted to 5 say 5.30 to 6. Oh. I wanted to say 6.30. But that's then I'm too, too late. hungry. That's too but late. But see, I think the when I was going to answer what the world thinks, I was going to say seven o'clock. What? You want to know why? Yeah, there are because that's yep. when people eat at restaurants. That's dinner time in my house. That's dinner time in a lot. See, it's how you grew up. I grew up like you better. You, the friends go home. You better be ready to eat at five o'clock. Sure. Okay. And so then you just tra that transcends your own life story. But I, the world, you go look at when people are booked for dinner. At restaurants, yes. when they're on the road for dinner, it is always seven o'clock. I think six thirty is the peak restaurant dinner time. I think it's six twenty-five. <laughs> but Owl is right; like dinner time in the right household actually skews more towards seven. But that's because five thirty rolls around, and we're like, "What's for dinner?" I don't know. <laughs> someone should figure out what we need to do for dinner, and it takes till about seven p.m. Until someone makes a decision and either something has been made or food is being yeah, delivered. What, at what part of the night does your DoorDash get canceled and you have to make new plans? <laughs> Not, 9 p.m. is where, as, <laughs> as soon as 9 p.m. rolls around, that is where you start. You know there's a chance that this is getting canceled because you might order, but then the kitchen's going to be closed once they get it. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm very experienced. They should add a reinforcements checkbox to the DoorDash where it just auto orders you a second meal. From someplace. <laughs> reinforcements. Back, like I like back And you call it reinforcements. I like it. Yeah. Now, and what if you want both? Well, you'll get both, hopefully. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, okay. What was that? Yeah, ideal time for dinner? I think we figured that one out. Six o'clock We got PM. time for another one or two? We got nothing but time. Oh, gosh. Yeah, he's going to be here. He doesn't, he doesn't have dinner plans. 7 p.m. <laughs> I'm checking the cameras now for this. <laughs> uh, what about, how about this? Tara from Patreon. What's the difference between a rumble, a fight, and a brawl? A rumble, a fight, and a brawl. Well, brawl's easy. It is? Oh, yeah. Brawl's super easy. A brawl's not two people. Brawl. Yeah. A brawl. <laughs> yes. 
A brawl is. We're a, back to Kid yeah, Rock. Yeah. A brawl is a group of people getting yes. in a brawl. You don't. Yes. You know, it, or you, it can be one on many. You know, I got into a brawl, <laughs> but I can't get into a brawl with just me and you, Andy. We can't get into a brawl. We can't. It has no to be, way. So it's po- amount of people. See, to me, it was a mental picture of like while we're fighting, some objects are flying away from the fight. Okay. From the fight, like yeah, it's I, it's a I, brawl. Do you know what I'm saying? I understand that picture, but the like reason, a watch goes flying off or a shoe. The reason for that picture is because there there's are, more than there's one, more yeah. than one person, and that's going to cause a ruckus. But there's no. Oh, what's a ruckus? <laughs> well, see here. Let's start easy. A fight is one v one. That sure. th- we can lay that out. Okay. Now, see the my problem with your definition of a brawl is because a rumble to me sounds the same. Also, yeah. has uh, more than one person on a side. I don't know. Mr. Buffer asks always, yeah, are you ready him. to rumble? That and is, that's a one-on-one. That's true. But I believe he has also asked that at the Royal Rumble. Mm. Oh, now that's teams. So it can be either. No, that's not teams. It's But it, that's it's uh, 1v1, v1, v1, all the way up to whatever, 30, whatever. I think the difference between a brawl and a rumble is when you're in a rumble, you know whose side you're on. It's very clear, oh. and you are you got one side over here. You got one side over there. When a brawl happens, it's so impromptu that – Everyone's fighting there, everyone. There's, swinging. there's clear sides, but you when you're in the heat of the battle, you don't actually know. You might be punching out somebody who's on your side. Oh, you're swinging wildly. Yeah. Well, because I think part of that is because of all the stuff that's flying around. Well, yeah. more tables get broken in a brawl than a rumble. For sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Brawls it's are- a bar, bar room brawl, right? Yeah. Yeah, they don't call it a <laughs> bar rumble. No, um, I don't think – if two tables get broken, it, it bra- that's a brawl. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so maybe a chair. A, so this one was easy. A fight is one on one. A rumble is more people, but you know who you're fighting and who's yes. fighting you. Yep. And a brawl is anarchy. It's just complete. Everyone is fighting yep. everyone, and you don't even know what you're fighting about. You're, you're at just, this point, you're just fighting. You're just there to win. Night <laughs> Howler from the website. If brands were brutally honest, what brand would have what slogan? <laughs> oh man! Oh man! If- Taco Bell. Something to eat. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, that's good. Um, uh, Prius. <laughs> um, you're stupid by this. Oh my God. What? That's you're stupid. Uh, what? By this. I just hate Prius so much. He hates them so I much. I hate. I hate the Prius. I hate them. Um, it's a it's a I dark don't, I still dark don't place. Understand why you hate the Prius so much? Because it I've was- seen them drive on the road, Mike. Yeah, but like. It was a it was a good car. Oh, the it, car is fine. It sparked a real revolution. It was the first car where it was like, we can get better gas mileage. We can Great. do better. Yeah, and we did. We did way better. <laughs> there's there's so many better options. I mean, look, they're hideous. Yeah, I will give you that. They were they were the cars that like, how can we make a car look real stupid, but it looks like it's from the future, the stupid future. <laughs> Uh, the, the payday loan companies would have a, a change oh, in marketing. Oh, gosh. Goodness. Like, it's not going to work out. Or, <laughs> please, no, please don't. Payday loans slogan should be, do you not have any money? We'd like your, we'd like more money from you. That's what it is. Yeah. I mean, it is, th- there should be certain industries that are just not allowed to exist. Uh, oh, yeah. There's, yes. Jimmy John's. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, is we this, make, are you just trying to wipe our sponsors off the map? We make this from the toilet. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's their slogan. Wow. My wife and I debate Jimmy John's all the time because she's she likes them. Why? I don't know. Why? It's funny, too, because... There's good subs out there. I, there's great... I said, did you say Jersey Mike's wrong? Or, yeah. And she's like, no. I'm like, the bread's terrible. She's like, I like the bread. I was like, the bread's so hard. And she's like, I did worry about breaking a tooth. <laughs> she said that. She worried about breaking her tooth on the bread? Yeah, because exactly, because Jimmy John's. On a sandwich? On a sandwich. On a Sammy. How do you break a tooth on a sandwich? You order Jimmy John's. <laughs> Man. I was trying to figure out, like, Apple. It's like, <sighs> oh. You pay for the logo? Yeah. I mean, that's Nike, too, Apple's right? Lo- Apple's slogan has changed in the last decade. Think- I think it's got to be something along the lines of, the only thing we innovate are our prices. That's a good one. I was thinking more along the lines You're of You're going like, to buy it anyways. <laughs> yeah. That that would work, but um this is brand new. You've never seen it before. This is way too long for It's a lie. Mm. Some they they always say they're the first with everything. Oh, yes. But they yes. haven't invented something in forever. Yeah. 
This is our first. Yes. Th- that Maybe is we're not hearing Apple. them right. This is our first. <laughs> Just buy it. All right, let's draft. Oh, Spitwads, it's the busiest time of year. So if you need a break from the holiday action, which we all need from time to time, might I recommend my best fiends? The best fiends. Yeah. Best yeah, it's, fiends. It's the app. Best. Fi- it's like best friends, but there's no R. It's best oh. fiends. It's an app. You know, I've been playing it. It's one of those match three style puzzle adventure games. I am over level 200. Con- <laughs> I don't congratulations. Brag congratulations. Too much, but I am great at this game. You don't um, start at level 200, right? <laughs> you start you started 199 and I did I I overcame no it's a really good game there's unique gameplay you could play it anywhere if you got no Wi-Fi no problem best fiends can play whenever wherever even with an offline mode it's always challenging it's fun it's a nice little brain buster download best fiends free today on the App Store or Google Play you won't be disappointed that is friends without the R best fiends <laughs> The Spitballers Draft. All right, we are going to... This show is brought to you by Jimmy John's. <laughs> <laughs> we do talk a lot about the toilet on this show. Something to eat. Uh, <laughs> Al contributed Benadryl. You can't have allergies if you are unconscious. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, oh, man. That, I mean, that's pretty good. Benadryl like puts it. you to sleep. Yeah, that's true. It's fair. That's the NyQuil slogan. You can't be sick yeah, if, if you don't asleep. remember where you're at. <laughs> Uh, we are drafting 90s movies, but we're doing it film festival style, where each of us have to pick a comedy, a drama, an action movie, and a horror slash thriller. So mm-hmm. uh, we pick one from each category. So there's a little gamesmanship in terms of taking the best from a category you think is deep or not deep. And I get to pick first, uh, and then I have to wait a while. So yeah. I am going to go with my favorite movie, which is Braveheart. <laughs> I'm going to take, and it's in the drama category. Yes, and, and I am so glad I didn't have to make the decision to destroy Jason. Yeah, I, I'm just going to take it. Uh, this is really, really upsetting. I assumed when making this list that Mike was first, that he had the scat today. That mm. was my son. And so I knew I was going to get Braveheart because I didn't think you'd take that number one. I knew Andy I would. would. Not. You wouldn't, and there's no way I would let that pass me. Man, that... There are a lot of good 90s dramas. I would say that that's the deepest category. That is my least deep category really? on my personal bucket list here. So I really want to brave. I'm really disappointed I don't get to pick some others from that category. By it all might means, be a mistake. By all means, retract your pick <laughs> and move somewhere else. No, I'm going to take it. I'm going right. to take Braveheart. I know you and I, it's been our favorite movie for a long time. So what I attempted to do here when I was compiling my list is movies where like when I... Like it had a, it wasn't just like oh that that was the greatest movie. Like it ha- had an actual impact on, you know, shaping the way I see entertainment, shaping just what I think is funny. So I I I'd really try to dive deep. So I don't even know if these, if all of these movies will completely resonate with people at that level. We know we know when you pick a favorite movies, everyone out there's shouting at how stupid we are. But I will start it off with. Uh, it's it's one of the best movies of all time. What genre? It is an action movie. It changed action movies. It changed my perception of reality. And I knew nothing about it as I was going into the theater, and I left, and my mind oh, okay. was was shattered into a thousand pieces. I know where you're going. It's my number two on this list. And it still holds up. The sequels, ah, ah. The new one, hopeful. 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 But the original, The, the Matrix was a a movie event that it's hard to explain just how much it impacted things if you didn't if you weren't in the world you went into it not knowing anything about it yeah i did, I did too I, not I knew, even seeing the scene the, the the bullet scene i knew that keanu was in some kind of science fiction uh action movie that's really cool that's basically what i went into it w- with as well and i had never to my life at that point experienced what i experienced in that theater yes which was i remember at, at one point when uh you know when when the character finished this fight scene the whole theater erupted not like kind applause they were screaming and shouting in the theater it was really unbelievable and, great pick and like and i was yeah it's a great pick i think i had just i don't know what year it came out but i mean it's like 
I'm just old enough to see R movies or just under and got into the R. I don't know. I don't remember. But it was very – like I wasn't old. Yep. And so I'm sure these stories already existed, but this was my first real uh, rodeo with like – is stuff really real? Mm. And you're like, wait a minute. There is no spoon. I've just assumed it was real. What if you are correct and it is not uh, real? Also, I challenge if you That's I found with Land Before Time. If you enjoy <laughs> if you enjoy this show, I challenge you if you must watch every movie that we draft today. Oh uh, today? No, 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 no. You can't watch it. Even if today, you're young. Yeah, absolutely if you're okay. young. Speaking These of two that, have held up so far. Um man. I all right. I, I know that it's not necessarily the a movie uh, i know it's not necessarily the best strategy to go with a, a category that that one of you two have picked mm -hmm. but we're already talking about these action movies we're talking about how you know these things change and it, this to me was just in the category it was the one that stands out as the 90s action movie there's okay. a billion of them but yeah. this is the number one action movie from the 90s and it was the first r-rated movie i ever saw terminator 2 yeah. Yeah, Judgment Day. That was number two on my Unbelievable. list. Unbelievable. Did so, you see it in the in the theater? I did. I saw it late in the theater. It was in the theater forever, for years. I and that one. I did. What What was the first rated R movie you ever saw, Andy? And did first rated R movie he's I still ever waiting. saw? I don't know. Like it, it, mine was a big event. My grandpa brought me to Cliffhanger, and, no, and I, I was. Oh, and I, I, I'll try to think about it. I do not remember. And I was like fourteen, and my parents approved it somehow. And it was so like that was like that yeah, was a, that was a, a big, big that was a big moment. Like so I'm clearly I'm almost forty, and I still remember that. All right, um, negatively really affected you ever since. Yes. For my next pick, look at your tattoos. I, I try and climb every tattoos mountain are, I see. Are all <laughs> it's unrealistic. Um, for my next pick, I'm gonna go with comedy. Uh, yeah. There are there's a one A and a one B, so it's kind of a little bit difficult for me to to take this as the first pick. They're both just so unbelievable. They're two of my all time favorite movies, but I will choose Dumb and Dumber, okay, as my '90s comedy uh, film festival. I like it. Movie. I like it. It's very funny. It's not on my list. Ridiculous. But... Bad list. <laughs> uh, <laughs> list. Mike is back to you. All right. You cannot select another action movie. I don't need to. Okay. Uh, I got good. the one I wanted to, and and then so in the I will go to the thriller slash horror section, I, which it's, the definition of a thriller is tough. We were talking about this before the 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 show, and it's like a thriller to me is it's intense, it's very suspenseful, but it's not necessarily jump scares. It's not Correct. it's not necessarily someone a psycho killer's after you, but it, you still have those feelings like a horror movie, and. This again, this this movie is now, uh, kind of turned. Unfortunately, it's got so popular and it was so impactful that it's more of a oh please a more be, of a. What? I'm just hoping you take what I hope you take. Oh, it's more of a like a, a joke now. But if you didn't know anything about the movie, this and this to me was the first movie where it was like you learned the importance of spoilers. And uh, and you cannot get spoiled before you go to see movies. And the internet's starting to explode. So you could avoid spoilers back I then. I see what you see. But I will I will take the sixth sense. You see dead people. Yes. And it's spoiler. It's hard to truly explain the impact that that movie had if you weren't around was that before. Rated R? No, it was a PG-13. I remember seeing I I there's a few movies that I can remember being in the theater for and that's one of them. Like I can remember being yes. in there for six cents. And the end of it shows up and you go what? Your mind is blown. What? Okay. All right. So you took uh, your thriller slash horror category. It was on my list. Yeah. It was. It was probably going to be my pick for that category. So that was that was fabulous. Thank you. All right. I got two picks. Now it would be dumb of me to pick an action movie because you have both selected an action movie. Uh, but it'd be really fun. So I will go. <laughs> <laughs> Where do I want to go here? I the hardest one for me was picking the horror thriller genre. Oh, I got some more if you want. Um, and so. I let me make sure this movie was the nineties. <laughs> this came sure. out last week. Let me make sure. Uh ninety one. Uh, qualifies. All right. I'll As go the 90. Silence of the Lambs. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah, I'll go Silence of the Lambs for my horror thriller. It's it's older, obviously, in this yeah. genre. Did you it, when did you see it? Later. Okay. Yeah, later on. But it be, it fits the nineties horror thriller and just uh, I'm glad you saw it later on. And not like not when, you when were I was seven. seven. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's the weird. The weird thing is, is we were born. I was born in '84, 
So like most of the ones in the, like the other one I had on my list, I mean, maybe you take it, maybe you don't. Two of them have been picked. Well, don't, but, hold on. Yeah. Don't, don't, okay. All don't, right. Don't all start right. We start. give the end of our list at yeah. the end of the show. The other yeah. one is certainly one I wouldn't have seen at that time either. Okay. So well, uh, I'm just, I'm just curious, like when about in the, the nineties you saw it. I probably didn't see it in the nineties. Oh, really? Okay. I mean, may, maybe late nineties. Gotcha. Um, early aughts. No, there's no, no problems there. Just, uh, and then comedy, there's so many nineties comedy movies, but I'm just going to go with my heart. Okay. I'm just going to go with the movie. Like, Again, there are others that will get mentioned probably, um, but I'm going to go with the one that I probably saw more than anything else, which was Tommy Boy. <laughs> yeah. All right. I thought Tommy Boy with Chris Farley and David Spade was like the funniest movie on earth for many years. Tommy Boy. Uh, did you see it in the theaters? No. Yeah, I, no, I, did I never not. did. The VHS, my friend. The first time I saw Tommy Boy was on a family vacation, and you could rent movies on the TV in your room. Yeah. And this was like super novel. That was the first time you saw it? That was the first time I saw it. I mean, movies cost like $45 to rent on this stupid system, but the parents allowed it because it was vacation and it was- So you all watch it together? Yeah. And so it was like, this was a, that was a transformative comedy. Yeah, with Bo Derek, right? Um, So, so good. That was my only non-Jim- walkie-talkie? My non-Jim Carrey 90s comedy Yeah, I mean, obviously there's a bunch of Jim Carrey movies. There's a bunch of other- comedies so all right so jason has his comedy which means i will go with my drama and i will end up getting my top pick uh which because brave hearts on my list just wasn't my top one there's so many movies this is yes uh, it's, it's very difficult to narrow it down to one uh but when i eventually saw this this is like it came out i wasn't old enough came back to it as i'm starting to get my education on movies and you know the things that took place in the 90s but it really changed how i thought a story could be told where there's just multiple interweaving all really important storylines going on that connect at different time points and the dialogue is had it was something i had never experienced at that point i will take oh because there, there's a couple <laughs> of them but but i'm going to take pulp fiction Okay. I, I, you, not everyone. Tarantino was not for everybody, uh, but I th- that indoctrinated me. I'm guessing, and you, I am. Did super you watch in, that in the '90s? I watched in the late '90s. Okay. All yes, right. that's yeah. another one that wouldn't have been a yeah, that's early what age movie. But I do remember, like, it was it became popular right around the time my my older sister was in high high school, and so it was like I kind of got. A little bit of the gleaming of of this changing how how young people were seeing movies and everything, and I got to see it later. I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I, I get it. I'm in on that. Yeah, it, I I didn't I didn't mind Pulp Fiction. I thought it was a little overrated, but I are you a Tarantino have, guy? I have since come to love Tarantino. I haven't seen it mm. since uh, many 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 moons, but I didn't like Tarantino uh, at the time. At the time, gotcha. so um, all right. So here I am. I've got two categories left. Um, I've got my drama, which is just heartbreaking to not have Braveheart. But I'm going to go with Forrest Gump. Okay. Because it Such was a good movie. just one of the best movies of all time. Great story, great That's drama. An epic. It is a, not an epic, but well, like a... It, I think it's fine. It's, is, that, it's, is that a good term for it? it? It's not a movie you would normally think of as it, but just how it's... It was it's been, time span. Decades. Time. And, yeah. yeah, no, I <clears throat> I love that one. Um. And then my thriller, I'm really happy to get this one. My thriller slash horror. Because I'm not a huge, like, uh, th- I do like thriller movies, but I have a hard time really classifying them as a as a thriller. You both have yours, right? Yes. So, like, Jurassic Park is great. I just have a hard time calling that a thriller. I get it. It's a it's, thrilling movie. It's not movie. a thriller. It's a thriller. What do, you call, what do you call it, then? An action movie. That's what I said, too. See, I don't think it's an oh, action movie. Oh, you guys were discussing but this? Jurassic, I don't think that's Jurassic an action Park's movie. Jurassic Park's not a th- thriller but to be so i guess I, you uh, yeah not, uh, not See, like a classic but it's it, it's almost a horror movie where like the whole entire movie is setting up the bad guy which is a big bad monster and then the monster chases them all over the park sort of yeah sort of so i can see the argument but my point is i didn't want to go that way okay and i don't really watch a ton of horror movies because i'm a big frady cat mm-hmm. but in the 90s there was one of the best horror movies of all time that was truly up my alley i would watch it and love it now because it's hysterical it's funny 
It's is uh, it ironically funny or is no? It, it's it's just, made to it's, be funny. No, it's not made to be funny. It's just it's just a really fun to watch movie that is really really scary, very clever, has a twist, and created a franchise. I'm taking Scream. Oh, uh, well, yeah, of course. Scream, of was. course. Scream had a real cult following to yes. that, those movies. Yeah, I I loved Scream. I for, thought that those were great for someone who didn't really usually care for that genre. For what it's worth, I I, I asked Google what type of movie Jurassic Park is. Wikipedia says it's a sci sci fi action film. That's what it says. Sci fi. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because they're so it's science they're... fiction action sure. movie. Okay. It's. Yeah, did go. you know that the science in, in Jurassic Park is is not real? And the dinosaurs aren't actually. You know actually, what's funny is. That's the fiction part. I have a really hard time seeing science fiction <laughs> not ever being an alien. that's not in space. Yeah. Science fiction means I'm, I'm with the stars, baby. Um, um, all right. Was that my final or do yeah, I have another category? You're done, man. Done. You don't all get right, any more. All right. Mike, you have one pick left. You already all have right. your action, your thriller, your comedy. You need a drama. And here is where I will. Or, sorry, you have your drama. You I, need yeah, a comedy. I'm going comedy. Here's where I will complete it with a movie that unfortunately has uh, time has diminished the impact that it had when it originally came out because they whipped out a couple sequels for it which were still funny but they like lessened the impact of the original movie and this was the comedy i saw in the in the theaters more than any other movie and it was the original the original austin powers <laughs> international man of mystery with mike myers when this thing came it's out, mid nineties, eh, something like I'm trying that. Trying to remember, but, but when this thing came out, it was so fresh and so original, and like a character that I had never experienced, and I just laughed my butt off for the entire length of the movie, and it just got funnier every single time I saw it. And I'm not joking; I saw this thing probably eight to ten times in the theater where once it got to the dollar theater it was well what are we doing today ah let's just go see Austin Powers again yeah I mean that it, it's funny because I do think that's incredibly underrated because of what time did to it yeah time they, they, made it the, ruined itself yes it ruined itself it made the character just not funny anymore but yes. when it came out was unbelievable all right so my final pick has to be my action movie because you guys already have yours um and <sighs> there's two that I love, and I feel bad not picking both. Mm. Uh, but I can't pick both. Yes, so yeah, it's not the game. I will actually go with speed. Okay, I will really? go with speed with Keanu Reeves. Okay, yeah. and um, it's great. I it's won't argue. Top to bottom, that movie that movie has more depth than you remember too. If you all, if your head is just like, oh, it's just a. Just a bus. It's just a bus. No, it, it it's got character development and a good villain. I mean, Hopkins, uh, Hopper. Hopper. Yeah, mm -hmm. Dennis Hopper, and um, so I think Speed is going to take the cake for me in close contention. Since we're done with the draft, yes. The two other action movies that I brought up that I really liked were Fifth Element. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that's more of an indie kind of kind action sci-fi. Sci yeah. And then uh, and actually, uh, The Fugitive is a great movie. I don't know if you it's ever saw a, The Fugitive. It's a good movie. The Fugitive's a really, really I good movie. I don't care. Yeah, is that, that like, is that action? I feel like that's drama. But it's, it's in a, that. It's an action. Movie. My my is action it? movies. Were, I would call that a drama. My action movies were Independence Day, The Rock, and Face Off. The Rock. <laughs> yeah, I got to get some Nick the, Cage movies in there. I mean, those are just so bad. Action thriller film, according to Wikipedia, for The Fugitive. Yeah, thriller. Yeah, action I would, thriller. I'd include that. All right, I, what dramas were left oh, off? Oh, Shawshank. I mean, Shawshank was going to be. It's if, on my list. If I didn't take um, Tombstone, Braveheart. Mm, okay. Mm. Okay. For drama? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, what would you call Tombstone? Tombstone's. Oh, I mean, it's a western kind of, yeah, but I mean, that so wasn't a, a category. Yeah, I guess I would have considered it like western action, but that, uh, that fits. No. For drama, I had Green Mile, Jerry Maguire. Uh, oh, I love Jerry Maguire. Yeah, Chandler's it's, List. It's fine. Yeah, that's, that's very that's, drama. That's a tough one. Titanic. A Do you like Titanic? No, I just just on my list in case oh. I needed votes. <laughs> um, no, no, no. Fortnite. Genuinely, the <laughs> one of the very best. Few Good Men. Okay, Few There's, Good Men is one of the best dramas of the night. Tremendous. And what are what else did you guys have for your thriller horror? I'm interested. Seven. That's what seven, I was going to mention. Seven, seven was, was on my list too. On that that was my list. My list was uh, uh, Scream. Six cents and seven. Yeah, and I, then comedies, 
Happy Gilmore, Billy Madison, and Office yeah. Space. Yeah, Ace Ventura. Men in Black. Be drafted. <laughs> Ace Ventura 1. It's Ace all, Ventura all the Jim Carrey movies. Uh, liar, Liar. Is, is, Brooks, Cable Guy. is Brooks in here? Goodness gracious. Yes, sir. Brooks or Al, any omissions? I got nothing. Al doesn't watch movies. If so Brooks has nothing, you know I got nothing. All right. What did we learn today? What did we learn today? Oh, man, so many things. But in particular... I learned Mike. I, yeah, go ahead. I learned... Uh, I, was, I thought I was going to steal yours because you started talking about Mike. I learned that Mike has had a dysfunctional garage door <laughs> button for years that he has not just replaced. I was going to say, I learned that Cliffhanger was really the unraveling of his moral compass. Mm. Yeah, and I learned that... Don't let go. I learned that uh, they're called roller coaster parks. Yeah. Yes, they are. Yeah, that's a, it's fun to go to the old roller coaster park. <laughs> bring your friends down there. Better than the DMV. That's fair. You don't have to pay to get into the DVD. The DVD? <laughs> <laughs> You'll never get in. Well, you have to pay Thanks to get for out. tuning in, everybody. Goodbye. Thanks for listening to the Spitballers Podcast. To see what other nonsense the guys are up to, check out spitballerspod.com.